It's incredible to think that this unassuming stub of beautifully coloured rocks right here are literally the roots of an ancient mountain range that has been heavily eroded in the 400 to 440 million years since it was at its peak. I like to try to imagine how tall this ancient mountain range once stood and how much material was eroded in the time between its creation all the way up to the present day where the literal bowels of the mountain have been revealed as we can see here. When I inspect this area, I see so many features, all of which tell their own unique and fascinating story about what occurred here in the distant and not so distant recesses of geological time. For example, on its western edge, I can see signs that an incredibly primordial river once flowed through here. These rounded pebbles are all that we have left today which hint back to those ancient times when long forgotten tributaries and rivers snaked through the rugged land here, slowly wearing the mighty mountain range down throughout the eons. In this video, we're going to touch a bit more on this road cutting here in Ballarat. I've already made a video on it, which focused on a different aspect of its existence and on a different part of the story. But in this episode, I'm going to touch on the mighty mountain range that once stood here along with some of the nuances that exist to explain its formation. We'll take a look at the fault systems, the geological processes that occurred, and we'll discuss the role that an ancient microcontinent played as well, when it collided with Victoria 440 million years ago at a point just east of Ballarat and Bendigo. It would do so after an active subduction event slowly pulled this continental piece of land in until it inevitably collided with Victoria, forcing a continent to continent collision to occur leading to the eventual fusing and total accretion of this microcontinent with Victoria. And Tasmania, which was a part of this tiny microcontinent, would become a part of Australia from that point on. And this collision would help to further form and intensify the mighty mountain range that already stood here when these events occurred. Van Dyland is the name given to an ancient microcontinent that's around 1.6 billion years old. It formed much like the eastern part of Australia would, with it occurring in an ancient seafloor, with sediment shed from rocks from the nearby landmass that's more associated with Arizona and Antarctica than they are with anything that's even remotely Australian, before tectonic events uplifted this microcontinent, where it would exist for about 1.1 billion years before joining up with Australia. During the Ordovician period, 485.4 million years ago, it drifted exceedingly closer towards the ancient shoreline of Victoria after a wave of subduction events that began in the Ordovician and carried through into and well past the Silurian began to thrust this part of the land out of the deep sea. The Silurian began 443 million years ago and lasted through until 419 million years ago when the Devonian took over. And during this time, the microcontinent of Van Dyland collided with Victoria which was located east of present-day Ballarat and Bendigo at this time. When two pieces of continental crust collide, they don't subduct. Instead, the two more or less butt heads and smush against each other, crunching and folding the rocks, forming major mountain ranges in the process. This type of tectonic collision is unbelievably violent. It's responsible for the formation of the most spectacular mountain ranges on our planet, and this type of collision is what formed the Himalayan mountains in such a short period of time, geologically speaking. This type of mountain building event is known as an orogeny. And as you'll see in this video, this road cutting speaks of multiple orogenies. But when two pieces of continental crust collide, this type of tectonic collision works to thicken the crust, meaning surface volcanism isn't associated with these types of events as a result of that but earthquakes certainly are. There is still a magmatic element at play in this event though, as massive bodies of ancient magma chambers still do occur deep within the earth as a byproduct of the continent to continent collision. But because of the immense thickening that occurs to the crust during these events, these gigantic magma chambers all inevitably cool before ever getting a chance to erupt as there is just too much overlying sediment and confining pressures keeping the magma contained. And indeed, we can see signs of these massive ancient magma chambers all throughout this part of Victoria that prove that this very thing occurred as the entire state is filled with major intrusive batholith-sized bodies, 
showing just how massive the ancient magma chambers that existed during the days of this and many other collisions were, most of which thankfully never erupted. So back to the road cutting. The origins of this mountain range lie in the subduction event that occurred here 480 million years ago. Over time, the seafloor that existed deep within the ancient Paleo-Pacific Ocean slowly rose up with each subsequent tectonic event that occurred here. Then the microcontinent that Tasmania is situated on, which hosts present-day Melbourne, smashed into Victoria and formed a massive mountain range that ran north to south and was probably at least 6 kilometers or 3.7 miles above this present-day point in its original height. And that's a conservative estimate at best. It's no surprise that the Ballarat and Bendigo districts are so saturated with gold when you consider the variable amounts of tectonic events that occurred here. From subduction to continental collisions to oroclines, the latter of which is something I still haven't touched on yet but will in a future video very soon. Couple this with all the erosion that occurred here and you can see why this is one of the richest gold provinces in the world. The faults created by these events are substantial and the metamorphism that occurred here is what is ultimately responsible for the accumulation of gold that was shot up in a fluidic state alongside quartz where it would percolate and eventually solidify in the many fractures and faults that existed in the overlying rock. But underneath this massive crustal thickening, we also have the existence of something that's fascinated me for some time, and that's the occurrence of the inevitable volcanic arc that would have existed here during the original subduction events that occurred prior to the continent-to-continent -continent collision. And I think I might have found some hints of its existence in some parts of the state which is a topic I'm aiming to explore deeper in a future video, as it's never really been touched on much to my surprise. One of the things that fascinates me about this road cutting are these central rocks here. This is literally the middle of this part of the mountain, and it's known as an anticline, meaning it's a ridge or fold of stratified rock in which the layers slope downwards from the crest. And an anticline basically tells us that if we were to reduce this land down to its bare bones by removing all of the sediment that exists in the surrounding area, this would be the highest point in this specific bit, followed by a corresponding drop, because anticlines are followed by synclines. And as you might imagine, a syncline is the direct opposite to an anticline. It's a trowel or fold of stratified rock in which the layers slope upwards from the axis, and the syncline in this area is over here, followed by another less impressive anticline, then another syncline, then another more impressive anticline in an area that's a cemetery. But if we were to cut through the road here, we'd see the same type of anticline looking shape in the rocks that we can see in this cutting. And this repetitive syncline and anticline geology repeats endlessly all throughout Victoria and travels far beyond this point. But you wouldn't really know it because if you continued west from this cutting, much to my extreme disappointment and frustration, the recent volcanic activity released so much damn lava that the valleys, basins, ravines, and really almost all of the western part of ancient primordial Victoria, which is the real Victoria, has been filled up, covered over, obscured, and flattened. And this annoys me. I want the real Victoria back, damn it, not this glass half filled shit. As you can tell, I'm quite passionate about this. 90% of my life is spent imagining ancient Victoria, and the rest of my time is dispersed amongst this YouTube channel and a few other select things that pique my interest, coupled with, you know, the activities necessary to keep me alive. Damn you, sleep. So back to the topic at hand, if you travel west after this peak here, you'll be greeted by a much flatter looking land, because you are shifting from a landscape that is 450 million years old in its origin, to one that has been covered by young lava flows that were released from pretty much everywhere all over Western and Central Victoria in the past 7 million years, with thousands upon thousands of vents and eruptive centres, small and large, existing literally everywhere, beneath which lies the ancient valleys and peaks that once existed here, much to my extreme frustration. But if you move east, you see the fault line that shows us where the microcontinent that Tasmania sits atop originally slammed into and fused to the crust that now makes up Victoria. And this collision led to an extreme level of faulting, and to these mountains becoming far more pronounced than they otherwise would have become. 
Because this was a continent to continent collision, instead of a reverse fault occurring, we see the existence of a major transform fault. Meaning these two pieces of land collided and then began to shear horizontally against one another in a most dramatic way, crumpling, buckling, folding and uplifting the surrounding rocks as a result. So thank you Tasmania, you guys are bloody legends. The sea would have originally been here before this continent to continent collision more or less filled in the gaps. When we look at the faults in the actual road cutting, you can see that parts have moved that were once clearly joined. Along with this, you can see the intrusion of gold bearing quartz, interspersed amongst many of the faults and weaknesses that exist in between the layers of sedimentary material here. They intruded these rocks much later, and they did so by being shot explosively through the faults when they were in a highly pressurized, hot and fluidic state, before finally solidifying here, which was several kilometers beneath the earth when this event actually transpired. The fact that we can see these quartz veins everywhere shows just how much material has been eroded from here since they were deposited. The faulting that occurred here as collisions took place are known as reverse faults, which is when the block above the fault moves up relative to the block below it, and we can see that very clearly here in many parts. Victoria is more or less filled with reverse faults. Aside from some exceptions here or there, it's a land filled with upright fold dominated west dipping thrust faults. Now all of these layers of rock were once completely horizontal when they were originally laid down, but as you can see the layers tilt up dramatically today. It shows just how extreme the tectonic forces were, and during its height this mountain range travelled all the way up to and past Bendigo. If we look east of here, we have more anticlines visible, including one that's present at the top of this part of the ancient mountain range before dropping back into a syncline and finally peaking along the limits of the Brown Hill Ranges. And as you can probably guess, the Brown Hill Ranges are the stubs of this ancient mountain range, and the limits of where they begin is actually the spot where this ancient mountain range was constructed. And we can witness this in person by taking a look at this major reverse fault line here, which is a line where this mountain range was once at its highest. As I mentioned earlier on, the origins of this mountain range lie in the subduction events that originally uplifted this land. But when the collision with Tasmania occurred, the compressive stress really worked to thrust these mountains up, and it dramatically increased their height. This fault is one of many that marked the line of an ancient subduction event in Victoria. Before we wrap this video up, take a look at the many different sedimentary rock types here and the gorgeous vivid colours they display. It's quite amazing to me just how artistic simple sandstones, slate, mudstones and siltstones can be. But notice the metamorphic foliation that has occurred here. These bands and lines that we can see are foliation that occurred as a result of the regional metamorphic compression that's typical of areas where a mountain belt has formed, just like this one. These rocks develop a structure that reflects the direction that pressure was applied. I love how the centre of this part of the mountain is so clearly defined, how the actual rocks themselves reflect the direction of the pressure by forming these, yes I'm going to say it, chevron looking shapes in the very heart of this part of the ancient mountain, as compressions squeeze these beautifully coloured sediments from both sides. So this is what a simple road cutting like this can tell us, 550 million years of history that speaks to the existence of ancient rivers that once snaked through this land, to the many subduction events that took place here, topped off by a continent to continent collision that occurred when the microcontinent that hosts Tasmania collided with this part of Australia. And this is one of the many reasons why I love geology so damn much. Thanks for watching. Before I get to the outro, I just wanted to state that this was an unexpected part too. I just drove past this area again a while back and thought you know what, this damn story deserves more coverage than the first video I made where I recorded footage with my literal potato phone, which has survived much punishment in its time but it records absolute garbage quality videos. So I'm going to do right by this ancient mountain range and I'll be re-releasing part 1 with high quality footage to remove the potato-ness of it. And I wanted to give you guys a heads up that I plan to release that as a standalone video 
but I'll also combine both that and this video and release it as a separate compilation too, as I normally do. We're almost at 60k subscribers and my mind is continually blown each and every day guys. Thank you so much for all the love.